Johnson. Come on, it ain't no such thing. Now, it ain't gonna hurt you none. I got things to do. The first thing you gotta do is sit down here and get your hair cut. My hair don't need cutting. If it gets any longer, I'll have to I declare, you fight hair cutting like a steer fight brand. Well, the last time you cut my hair, you did brand me. How did I know somebody poured hot baby in my bowl? <laughs> Smarted considerable. Sure plastered your hair down nice, though. <laughs> no, I might go to selling that stuff. Greedy? <laughs> sure made your hair look mighty sprucey. Yes, sir. You were slicker than a peeled onion. It smelled like one, too. Sure. I'd go to selling that stuff. I could put an ad in one of them catalogs. If you want the girls to stop and stare, put Granny's gravy on your hair. <laughs> All right, Granny, come on. Let's get on with it. Hey, Uncle Jeff, you're getting your hair cut. Thanks for telling me, Jethro. Oh, well, that's all right. Darn it, Jethro. Well, what's going on? Is there going to be a wedding or something? I could be, the way that Sonny Drysdale is a sparkling hilly mate. Well, he's with her right now, up by the cement pond. I better get right out there and keep by him. Now, you sit still and leave those young'uns alone. Can't you remember how it was when you was a boy? Yeah. I better get right out there. <laughs> it's broad daylight. And besides, they swim. No, they ain't. He's a sitting on the bank, and he's a holding her hand. What an interesting hand you have. I see a man, a handsome man, a handsome Harvard man. Why? Right there on your heart line. Oh, that's just the one I got from picking up toast. <laughs> Ellie, you mustn't let horrid, slimy creatures touch you. Oh, heck, you ain't slimy, Sonny. Just a mite greasy from all that oil you smear on yourself. <laughs> what a precious paradox you are. What a charming contradiction. You look pure Park Avenue and you speak pure Tobacco Road. That good? Good. It's fascinating. You're a challenge to me, you child of nature. You are the raw clay from which I will mold a perfect woman. Worthy of a perfect man. Me. <laughs> you know Shaw Pygmalion? I don't even know Shaw, let alone his pig. <laughs> Woodlands, you forest little bird. <laughs> you are so refreshing after all those intellectual types of Basser and Wellesley. You make me feel superior. That good? Good. It's divine. <laughs> I am Caesar, and you are a fair-skinned captive, a barbarian slave. Shall I drag you through the streets of Rome behind my chariot? Oh, shall I throw you into the arena with my lions? No, Caesar has other plans for you, my little savage. You shall be my slave, yes, but only the invisible bonds of love shall make you my prisoner. <laughs> Come, I shall strum upon my lion and recite odes to your beauty. What say you to that, fair maiden? How speak you now to mighty Caesar? I declare, Sonny, you are more fun than a bucket of tadpoles. <laughs> Sit still, I'm liable to lop off a ear. Well, doggone it, Granny, hurry up. I gotta get out there and keep an eye on Sonny and Ellie. You want me to go out and see what they's up to, Uncle Jay? Now, you just sit still, the both of you. I expect Ellie May to get a husband if you don't let the boy spark her. Well, Ellie ain't never been learned about such things. Jed, sparking is like breathing. You don't learn to do it. Somebody slaps you and you go at it. <laughs> boy slaps. <laughs> <laughs> now, I declare you're wiggling worse than a worm in a bait bucket. You want your daughter to be an old maid? Of course not. Next year, she'll be too old to get a husband. She's almost 18. <laughs> sure is. She done waited too long, Uncle Jed. Why, no boy wants to marry up with a middle-aged woman. <laughs> Maybe May can get herself a husband anytime she wants to. 
Well, she's a purtiest oh, and... A... Now, don't get your old feathers riled up, you old rooster, you. Ellie May will be all right if you just leave her alone. Well, I ain't sure Sonny Drysdale's good enough for her. He's considerable older than she is. Well, don't worry about that, Uncle Jed. His family lives a heap longer than most folks. Yeah? Yeah. Sonny told me that there's been a member of his family a living in Boston since 1632. Well, that rascal's over 300 years old. <laughs> he was a green in you. Yeah, you sure swallowed a whopper. No, ma'am. Sonny's honest. Why, he's so honest, he has to have somebody do his lying for him. Do his lying for him? Yes, sir. Well, I heard him call through the heads to Ellie. He says, I'm coming over to serenade you, and I'm going to bring my liar. <laughs> Many did he, he. The world lies conquered at my feet. And yet I tremble at the nearness of this flaxen haired barbarian. Could it be that the invincible Caesar is about to be vanquished? Not by the spears and arrows of the Gallic tribes, but by Cupid's dart? <laughs> yes, fair maiden, you have done what your fierce kinsman could not. You have brought mighty Caesar to his knees. Come, I will take you to my palace and there compose odes to your beauty. See yon window, tis the emperor's suite. There I shall woo you. Mother! <laughs> That's my rule, and those are my binoculars. You're not supposed to spy on the Emperor. <laughs> what are you trying to tell me, Sonny? Mumsy can see you, but she can't hear you. <laughs> yes, darling, Mumsy is watching. You look magnificent, like Apollo. The god of manly youth and beauty. The god of poetry and music. <laughs> Look out! You're getting near the water. Be careful. Wait! Mommy will get your inner too. Come, fair maiden, and I shall sing of your golden tresses and your azure eyes and your skin of alabaster and your other charms that set me aflame. You mean you're really burning? Yes, dear one. And only you can put out the fire. Okay. <laughs> Feel better now? All right, Lizro, you're next. Oh, hi, Ellie Mae. Where's Sonny? Well, he went home to his mama. You didn't throw him down and hurt him again, did you? That's no, Pa. He caught fire, so I wetted him down in the pond. Sound like you've done the right thing. How'd he catch fire? He said it was my charms that set him to burning. What charms did you told him? Well, just my sack of crawdad bones and my buckeye. <laughs> you never heard of crawdad bones and a buckeye starting to blaze? What happened to your rabbit's foot? <gasps> I didn't have it. There you are. You can expect trouble when you ain't toting a rabbit's foot. <laughs> you know what my teacher over at Pot School said about toting a rabbit's foot? What? She said it's a superstitious invocation contradicted by scientific knowledge. Hmm, it's always nice to know you ain't been doing something foolish. <laughs> Don't you worry, Nun Ellie. You go jump into a purdy dress, and I'll whop you up a love charm that I guarantee will bring Sonny Drysdale back. Yes, I am, Mother. I'm going back. <laughs> darling, darling, you're delirious. Uh, the, oh... Here, read some of this penicillin. I'll send for an ambulance. Mother, I am perfectly all right. Of course you are, precious. A nice rest in an oxygen tent is all you need. I don't need an oxygen tent or an ambulance. All right. All right. Just relax. And Mumsy will call the police. Police? But of course. I mean to have that violent, dangerous girl arrested for attempted drowning. Mother, you will not call the police. I'm going back there right now to see Ellie May. 
Ah, oh, darling, that's very brave of you, but you're in no condition to make a citizen's arrest. Mother, I'm not going to arrest her. I want to help her, to work with her, to, to tutor her. What? She's like a wild, wonderful jungle cat, and, and I'm going to tame her. Honey, you are delirious. I'll call the doctor. Mother! Oh. Mind is made up. That girl needs me. For the first time in my life, somebody really needs me. I need you. The whole world needs you. Ellie Mae Clampett needs me, and I need her. I'll be her Pygmalion, and she'll be my Galatea. <laughs> 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 You're not becoming emotionally involved with that creature. She's not a creature, Mother. She's a girl. A wild, wonderful, beautiful, ravishing girl. Yes, I am becoming emotionally involved. <laughs> I forbid it. She's not socially acceptable for my baby. Mother, I'm not your baby anymore. I'm a man in search of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Duke, you noble veteran of the chase. Are you homesick for your forest paths and mountain trails? <laughs> you look like a cashier waiting for the bank examiners to arrive. <laughs> you know, if you were a cashier, you could hide a million dollars in here. <laughs> there goes that music again. <laughs> Did you ever find out where that's coming from? No, sir, I didn't. Every time I went to look for it, somebody always come to the door. <laughs> this time I'm gonna find it for sure. You see? <laughs> oh, bonjour, Jeffro. Oh, howdy, Miss Hathaway. No, 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 no. When I say bonjour, Jeffro, you say Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. That's it. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. Bonjour, Mademoiselle Jane. <laughs> well, that's very good. Except for the moi. Uh, must be soft. Moi. Mm, moi. No, 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 no. W watch, my, watch my lips closely. Moi. Try that. Mm, moi. Try it again. <laughs> Wow. Well, that's closer. Try again. Mwah. Once more. Mwah. Close in on her, Jethro. <laughs> oh, oh, Mr. Clavin, I, I was attempting to teach Jethro to articulate the Gallic diphthong. <laughs> no matter what fancy name you call it, he ain't very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> He'll learn. <laughs> but now to the purpose of my visit. Is Sonny Drysdale here? No, but uh, he will be. Granny's out in the kitchen whomping up a love charm for Ellie to give to him. She said they'll bring him on a run. Mr. Claver, I am reluctant to disillusion you about so-called love charms, but they are mere superstitious invocations and have been proved to be completely ineffective. Granny sets great store by him. <laughs> One guaranteed love charm. Guard it with your life. What's in it, Granny? Oh, I doesn't tell you. Leastways, not just yet. But I'll give you the secret before I go on to my reward like my Granny done to me. And I'll guard it too, Granny. <laughs> Granny? Granny, Mr. Clapper tells me that you've conjured up some sort of love charm for Ellie Mae. Right here, it is. Made out of all secret stuff. That is ludicrous. Irrational, sophomoric, and <laughs> pure hokum. <laughs> you didn't even 
eating just one ingredient. <laughs> no, Granny. I, I, don't you come spying. I'm telling you for the good of the country. If the secret of this love charm ever got out, I shiver to think what might happen. I wouldn't want it on my conscience. <laughs> Hear me now, mongrel. Neither sleep, nor snow, nor vicious beast shall keep me from the side of my beloved. Here I come, ready or not. So, you still think it won't work, huh? That is correct. All right, Ellie. Open up the pouch, mate. Now, when I drop this starting powder in it, quick close it, press it to your heart. And say, darling, darling, my true love, come a swooping like a dove. <laughs> darling, darling, my true love, come a swooping like a dove. This is Ellie! <laughs> Ellie! I have flown to your side in spite of all danger. What fate, what power have I to thank for giving wings to my feet? That little old charm maker, me. <laughs> shall begin the transition from Tobacco Road to Park Avenue. Now you watch me closely and I'll show you how to develop perfect posture and grace of movement. Ah, Kipling. Well, do you like Kipling? I don't know. I ain't never Kipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are a challenge, you ravishing rustic, you child of nature. Now here, you try it. There we are. Now walk. You'll have to try that again. Now sit down. Now watch me. We walk as though upon a cloud. And we glide with lissom grace. And as we walk, we always keep a smile upon our face. What's he doing? That there is some called Kipoli. He's trying to learn to Ellie. <laughs> this is how you sit in a chair. Smoothly. And graceful. <laughs> there ain't no chair where he's a sitting. I know. What do you reckon's wrong with that rascal? Appears to me he's about two bricks shy of a load. <laughs> Turn old Duke loose so we can go in there and protect Ellie. <laughs> now we'll practice diction and intonation at the same time. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? What's he talking about? He thinks old Duke is a cow. <laughs> you best fetch Granny. Here's to be she's threw too strong a charm on that boy. <laughs> there you are. One guaranteed charm. Now, you hold the bag while I sift in the starter. I know this is all a lot of absolutely ridiculous nonsense. Please hurry. <laughs> <laughs> darling, darling, my true love, come swooping like a dove. I better open this door before he busts it in. <laughs> Miss Jane! Here he is! Granny's love charm is too strong. Don't fight it! It's bigger than both of us. <laughs> Circled on me. Granny, come quick. The love charm you thought on Sunday Drysdale was too strong for him. <laughs> Thank you, Granny. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How's it going, Uncle Jed? Bad. Now he's got Ellie believing old Duke is a cow. <laughs> reckon, John Grady? I reckon so. I'll sprinkle him with some letting go powder. Well, while you're at it, I'll sprinkle some on Miss Jane. She's shutting off the blood to my arm. Oh, no. Brown cow. Secret powder, white as snow. Make the charm of love let go. What's it do? The spell is broken. Now, please, everybody listen to me. I must have complete quiet and concentration if I am to transform this bucolic beauty into a sophisticated debutante. Now, I have...
have studied drama at Yale, Harvard, Princeton, and Dartmouth, and I am probably the only living man who can accomplish this difficult cultural metamorphosis in the brief time available. <laughs> now, everybody, please go! <laughs> While I transfuse into this simple, untutored mind the charm, the polish, the splendor that is Sonny Drysdale. <laughs> Hi, Granny. Is Ellie and Sonny still in that room alone? He was the last time I was listening, a couple hours ago. He was talking about the rain in Spain, a land in the plain. Well, I guess he can't be up to no nonsense if they're talking about the weather. Yes, <laughs> no, he's, I can't wait to see Ellie all polished up and talking like Sonny and Miss Jean. While you're waiting, I got something for you. What is it? A love charm. <laughs> What in Sam Hill I want with that? Ain't what you're wanting, it's what you're getting, a woman. And it's high time you got one being a widower. Besides, the moon is bright. That's why this stuff is working so high-fired powerful. So here. Well, I ain't interested in none of these la di da Beverly Hills women, so here. Well, they're interested in you, so here. Who said? Jethro said. Jethro don't know nothing, so here. I reckon Jethro ought to know what's going on in his own school. Besides, I saw her making sheep's eyes at you. So here. You caught who making sheep's eyes at me? Mrs. Millicent Schuyler Potts, that's who. Oh, now. You did. <laughs> I educate a woman like that. Jethro says she asks for you every day. Hmm. Oh, what she want with an old mountain goat like me? I was to put a little starting powder in there, and you was to say the magic words. No woman could resist you. Oh, I don't hold with stuff like this. You're scared, ain't you? Oh, I ain't a scared. <laughs> then go ahead. Thy double dog dare you. Well. Open the pouch, you might. Well, this is just a lot of doggone nonsense. Close it tight, clamp it to your heart, and say the words. <laughs> darling, darling, my true love comes swooping like a dove. Where is he? Where's my dog? <laughs> it's Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> where is he? Oh, where is he? Oh. I tried to stay away, but I could not. He's mine, and no other woman shall have him. Right, then. You're a married woman. Think of your husband. Come on. I don't care about my husband. I want my darling, and no one is going to keep me from him. Uh, I sure hate to have to do this, but... <coughs> Sonny, where are you, Sonny? He's inside with Ellie May. Now, if you just calm yourself down, I'll go and get him. He's coming, Miss John Howdy, Ma. Was you a hollering for me? Then brainwash you. 